Hi, and welcome to Get Old, Go Slow, Write Code. I have three goals for today. Goal number one is to convince you all that it is a good thing to get old. My second goal of today is to convince you all that it's a good thing to slow down. And my third goal of today is to convince you all that you should keep on coding until you die. So, will I succeed? I think we have the answer of that in like 45 minutes. So, I'm Tobias Modig. I'm a consultant at Ceteris in Stockholm, currently acting as a developer coach. And when I saw the schedule for like this year's DevOps, I was pretty happy when I saw I got the second slot of the day. It was a good one, but then I saw my competition. I mean, we have the keynote speaker, Alan Thompson, over there. And we're here at the big Java conference, and we have the father of Java, James Gosling, talking over there. So I expected that this room should be more or less empty. But you are all here, so I'm very pleased for that. I'm amazed. Thank you. And this will be some kind of like interactive talk. So I will use an online poll. You can already now check into etc.ch slash g, capital B, capital X, capital M. I think those capital letters are actually important. Or you can just use a QR code. So please have your device ready. No worries if you miss the link for now. It will come back a few more times during the, the talk. So let's start with the aging. Was I... Was it true what I stated in that talk description? So I quote myself, turning old as a developer is hard. It is hard to stay relevant, hard to keep up with the competition of newcomers, and hard to know all of those new frameworks, tools, languages, and practices. So like 15, almost 20 years ago, I was working at this big travel company back in Stockholm, and we were like 15 developers sitting in this big room working with a public website. But in that room, there were also two odd fishes, two grumpy old men. And one of them like, actually coughed so loud, so the rest of us really just took shelter under the desks each, each time, hiding from what we thought was like the World War III or something. And those two men, they worked at a different system. I think it was some kind of like maintenance system. And it had this like UI taken directly from war games, you know, black background, just letters. And the programming language, I think it was, was Fortran. At least I'm sure it wasn't Java. And it couldn't have been C either, because both of them lacked, you know, those big C developer beards. But suddenly, one day, they were gone. Their system was replaced. They had become irrelevant, like dinosaurs from past time. And for me, that has been like the definition of getting old as a developer. Old, not just in like actual age, but also in techniques. But still, I do admire those two men, because they kept on with a passion of writing code until the bitter end. But back to the main question, what is old? So I guess it's time to pop that question back to you. So now it's time to pick up your devices, your phones, for the first time, and go to etc.ch slash g, capital B, capital X, capital M. So etc.ch slash g, capital B, capital X, capital M. I will remove that link in three, two, one. And there we go. So this was actually like the uh, warm-up question, just to see if the techniques was working. And I get a little bit angry here that like 27 people, 28 people of you wants to kill Yoda. I will say that there is the door. But I'm still happy that the like Jar Jar Binks Yoda ratio is pretty much okay. But uh, Let's keep on to the, like, the real first question. So this should be an easy one. What is your age? Are you 0 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50? Or are you even older than 50? 
So the answers keep popping in here. Well, one of us are below 20, that's nice. So I guess that's it. Let's move to the second one. So do you consider yourself being old? Is it yes, no, or is it more like, I haven't even thought about that question? Are you kidding me? Not that many oldies in the house. So third and final question for now. From a developer's perspective, what do you consider being old? Is it when you reach like 20, or when you get 30, 40, 50 or above? Or are you more that kind of person that thinks that everyone who's older than you, they are really old, but I will never get there. Then you go for the like your age plus one. Or is it more that like age, it's just a mental thing. It's really not a physical one. So I guess the last option is definitely the most popular here, so... Let's get back to the presentation. So what actually like, triggered me into this aging thing from the beginning was reading the Stack Overflow survey, developer survey, back in 2019. And it actually stated that the average age of the software developer it's 28. When I saw this, I was like, that is really old. And also, if I compare this like, audience to this, I would say that we are a little bit older in this room. So why is that? Maybe it's a topic, I don't know. Or is it just like, like Java is becoming the new COBOL, so it's just the old guys who do the Java development? I don't know, but at least average age of a software developer was 28. So 75% of us are below 35. So India has the youngest developer population with an average of about 26. And the Australians are the oldest. They are a bit older than 32. And when I, when I saw this, like I said, I was pretty surprised. This felt so young. So I started to compare us to like other professions. So I, took a look at teachers, and what's the average age of a teacher? And it turned out to be the meaning of life, for you who knows your hitchhiking. It's 42. They are like 15 years older than us, almost. That's a really huge difference. And how about medical doctors? Well, no surprise there. They are even older, with an average of 51. Project managers. Well, this would be an interesting one, I think, because we work more or less in like the same areas. We have pretty much the same level of education, work in the same sectors, etc. But still, they have the same age as teachers, beating us with almost 15 years. So I kept on looking at a few more like similar professions, and I couldn't find anything that was even close to us developers. So I thought, maybe I should check some other kind of jobs, those jobs that don't demand those years at the universities. For instance, taxi drivers. So what's the average age of a taxi driver? And they are even older than teacher, average of 47. So I really needed to go lower. So I went to the bar, and I found the bartender they have an average a bit over 34, so that's four and a half. So now we're getting closer, but it's still six and a half years difference. And the colleagues at the restaurants, the dishwashers, what's the average age of a dishwasher? And they turned out to be the same as the bartenders, 34. And that's a bugger, because now I was starting to be a little bit grumpy, because I really wanted to find something by myself that had an age profile that looked a little bit like being a software developer. But then I remember this tweet I saw. Minecraft players. <laughs> What's the average age of a Minecraft player? And it turned out that they are only 24, 
We beat them with like four years. That's not bad. But still, it's a bigger leap between being a software developer and a bartender than it is between being a software developer and a Minecraft player. And also, being a Minecraft player, it's not really a profession for most of us, right? More of a hobby. I couldn't really count that. But then I got it. You can always count on the US military, right? And they are actually old, younger than us. They have an average of 27. And also, this is more like an employer, right? Not a profession. So this has everything from like five-star generals to like tank drivers to Maverick. So I expect, for instance, a cannon father to be even younger than 27. And when continued looking at a few more professions, I only also found out that, for instance, sport professions, like professional football players, they are also younger than us. They have an average of 26. And when cheating with the statistics, I found a few more. Like a lifeguard, I believe they were the youngest, actually, with an average age of 22. But still, I would claim that being a software developer is one of the youngest working populations in the world. And when taking level of education under account, we are definitely the youngest. But age, that's just a number, right? What's even more important to me, I think, is how long do we tend to stay within the profession. So now it's time to pick up those devices once more. etc.ch slash g, capital B, capital X, capital M. I will give you a few more seconds. And there we go. First question. So how many years of experience as a professional developer do you have? So a really experienced bunch of people here in the room, it looks like. Second question. What was the age of the best developer you have ever worked with? So the blue option, that 1 to 40, very much in the lead, I would say. Still popping in a few more. So final question for now. If you take a wild guess, so how many years do you think you will continue being a software developer? So will this be your final year? Or do you think you will continue for one to two years? Or three to five? Six to ten years? Do you think you will code for more than ten years? Or will you actually code until you die? And let's just cross our fingers that that is actually like short, longer than the other options. So a whole lot of coders here. So once again, this uh, audience was actually pretty much more experienced than the rest of the world. Because the expected number of years to stay as a software developer, that is actually eight. And I would say that that is pretty bad. That is really bad. We are like throwing competence right at the scrapyard. We are replacing the developer tribe, more or less, every eight years. And I would say that that is not good. So how does that come? Are people like using being a developer as a bouncing pad towards other professions? Or are we scaring them away? So who could know that answer better than you? So let's pick up those phones again. Sorry, I can give you the link. But I guess you already have it, so... So what do you think will make you quit as a developer? Do you think you will be burned out? Do you think we'll get some kind of like promotion, or changing role? Or do you think you will code until retirement? Or do you think you will like lose the spark, wake up one day and it's not fun to code anymore? Or do you think it has something to do 
with getting old, the aging, having it hard to keep up? Or do you more expect like winning at the lottery? You will code until you get those millions, and then you will get off to the Bahamas and not write one single line of code. Or do you actually have some other opinions? So promotion, changing role, that's a big one. Oh, sorry. So this time, actually, the audience more or less like reflected the rest of the world. Because when I see, read surveys, when I talk to people, colleagues, that used to be developers, it's usually three things that make us quit. The first one is that we lose the spark to code. It is not fun to code anymore. The second big reason to quit is like getting a promotion, make a career, or whatever you would like to call it. And the third big reason to quit is that we are getting old. We think we are getting slow. We have a hard time to keep up. So let's elaborate a little bit more on those three, starting with losing the spark. And I would say that this is it's a very valid, but also very sad reason to quit. If you don't have the passion for coding, you shouldn't have it as a profession, I think. So the day you wake up and you feel like, like I don't want to code anymore, then you have my total blessing to go on doing something else. But how about the second big reason to quit? Getting promotion climbing the company hierarchy, making a career, or whatever you like to call it. Well, maybe if it seems like the combination of the first one, losing the spark, then I would say it's a, a really good and valid reason to quit. You should probably like take that path. And if you're in that mood, actually like Sven and Helen had a really good talk about it yesterday, so if you wasn't there, Go get it as, at YouTube. But if not, if it's more like you want to earn more money, make a career. Well, I actually stepped into this trap once myself. I was surprised, but also really flattered when I was asked to become head of development. But I'm sorry to say that it was so boring. It felt like a total waste of my expertise. Instead of doing what I loved, writing code, I was sitting on those budget meetings, talking about resources, or arguing with a cab, you know, the change advisory board. Why these changes that my developers did in our mobile app could not make aeroplanes to fall down from the sky. You might think that was a bad joke, but it's actually true. I'd had to convince this group of hopefully quite smart people why the changes in our mobile app could not make aeroplanes to crash. So did I do a good job? Well, I think my teams liked me. I was pretty good guarding them from like, the insanity of company administration. But from many other point of views, I was probably not that good. And I guess we all have seen this. Just because someone is a great developer, that person will not be a great manager, or a good project leader, or even a decent team lead. I guess the opposite is just as common. And there is actually a term regarding this, stated in the late 60s by Lawrence J. Peter and Raymond Hull, and it is called the Peter Principle. And the Peter Principle states that a person who is competent at their job will earn promotion to a more senior position, which require different skill. But if the promoted person lacks the skills required for the new role, then they will be incompetent at the new level, and so they will not be promoted again. So we will more or less, according to this, be promoted until we reach our level of incompetence, and there we will stay, we will get stuck there, until we get fired, or in worst case, forever. And this will eventually lead what it's called the Peter's Corollary. So in time, every post tends to be occupied by an employee who is incompetent to carry out his duties. 
So according to this, we have these companies, these organizations, where more or less everyone is like incompetent at doing their job. Of course, this is a little bit like ranting, but I think it got a little bit of truth in it as well. And there we have like the expected software developer life cycle, where we are expected to like start as junior developers. We should move on to be a senior developer, and then we should take the next step to become a team lead, and maybe a project leader, and uh, a manager, and finally, some of us might even know the reach the nirvana, like becoming some kind of like CXO, yay. For me, that's more or less trying to push us from being competent to being incompetent. So we have known this for like 50 years, and still this is one of the most common reasons for developers to quit. I mean, there are even courses from turning from developer to managers. I think this is whacked. I think we need to address this. There must be ways to make your career, to raise your salary, and keep on coding. So are there any managers seeing this? Could you please stop trying to tr transform your 10x developers into like 0.4x administrators? Instead, give them a decent salary, reward them continuously, and let them keep on doing what they do best, writing code. And to you developers who think about changing career, I would say, believe me, it's not worth it. At least if you don't have the passion for attending meetings, believe me, I have tried. But how about the third big reason to quit? Getting slow, getting old. Is it a problem to get old as a software developer? I mean, maybe Zuckerberg were right. Young people are just smarter. So are we developers over 40 like dinosaurs, ready for extinction? Well, I might be biased here, but I would say that he is wrong. I mean, Zuck I mean uh, Newton, he was 44 when he published the Principia. And Röntgen was about the same age when discovering the X-ray. And if you take a look at today's Nobel Prize winners, more of them look more like American presidential candidates than developers, right? So I wouldn't say that it's, it's not the mind that gets slow. But how about getting slow, like in the fingers? So, is that a problem? I would say it's probably the opposite. I think we developers, we need to slow down. We need to start, stop going for speed. We should slow down. In one of my other talks that I do from time to time, I quickly mentioned that I think that we have too much focus on speed, that we need to slow down. And when I started to dig into this a little bit more, I found out that way smarter people than me had more or less the same ideas. Like this tweet from J.B. Rainsberger, worried that TDD will slow down your programmers. Don't. They probably need slowing down. Or this one, also from J.B. Sooner, not faster, slow down to avoid making rash commitments. This one from Lemmy, actually here at DevOps, he speaks later today. So going fast without control could be the biggest enemy of software development. Still not convinced? Joshua Karievsky, the father of modern agile, we slow down in order to gain better balance and control. Ultimately, this kind of slowing down helps us speed up. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So what is speed? What is fast? What is slowing down? Well, I believe that too many people mix up speed. We're rushing. They want us developers to behave like Usain Bolt. You know, Usain Bolt, the fastest man on Earth on the 100 meters. 
But what they forget is that being a software developer, software development, it is not a hundred meters dash. Still, we are expected to run as fast as we can for a hundred meters, but as soon we, that we reach the goal line, we are asked to run a hundred meters more over and over and over again. I don't think we should be Usain Bolt. We should be Ricardo Abad. I think most of you don't know Ricardo Abad, so here's the short story. He is from the city of Tafaya in Spain, and on the 1st October 2010, he ran a marathon. On the 2nd October 2010, he ran another one. And so he continued for 607 consecutive days, running one marathon a day for more than one and a half years. And what's even more impressive is that he continued working shifts at the local factory meanwhile. So if he worked nights or mornings, he ran in the afternoon. And if he worked in the afternoon, he ran in the morning. And I believe that that is the mentality we should have as software developers. We should slow down and find the sustainable pace. So why are we still doing this kind of rushing? It's, to me, I think it's probably a mix of different things, like deadlines. To me, deadlines are usually poison. It's mostly a random date that someone guesstimated like way back in time. But suddenly, that date, that transforms to being some kind of like hard truth, something that we need to stick to when it's still just a date. But I think that we actually did this right at, at least once. At that, that time, I was doing a gig as a system architect at the Swedish tax agency. And if you don't know the Swedish tax agency, they have this pretty hard deadline once a year in the beginning of March. And that's because everything there circles around the yearly income tax declaration, where like 6.3 million truly unique Swedish users, that's like 80% of the Swedish population above eight, 18, they use their e-services for like a little bit more than two weeks. So me and my team, we were responsible for the uh, login and the uh, identification of users for their public e-services. And we needed to replace the old system because it was obsolete and it had these like, performance issues. And this was a big job. We needed new hardware, we needed new software, and of course, we needed, needed a whole lot of development. But after a while, that deadline in March, it started to feel tough. So we needed to take a decision. So should we work overtime? Should we rush? Should we build a crappy, but hopefully working solution? Or should we actually wait for a year and build a quality solution? And this time, we actually took what I still think is one of the best decisions in my career. We actually waited. But I'm sorry to say that this is one of the few occasions that I have ever seen this, that I ever have been like in, a in a situation where both the developers and the management approve this. Another, what I think, common reason for the rushing are actually like the lean and the startup movement, where we are told that the only thing that matters is to deliver, to be the first on the market. But to be honest, how often does it really matter to most of us? How often does it make a difference to the company that you work for if we be a little bit quicker in the beginning? I would say that for a very, very few of us, maybe once or twice, in a lifetime, but for most of us, never, ever. I mean, for instance, I have a friend, he works at Spotify, and I can guarantee you that they won't lose listeners just because a like, share playlist with a QR code is a week late, just because they want to improve the unit testing. Or the Minecraft, I would say that people will not stop playing Minecraft just because a like, B update must wait for the next release. Or when I worked at the bank, I would say that we will definitely not 
lose our, our mortgage, co uh, mortgage loan customers? Yes, because they like download the latest interest rate as a PDF file. It's like one week late. But those customers, they will definitely start leaving us the day that we start building crappy solution that we can't change at all for a few weeks time uh, for a few uh, for a few years time and also another big rushing factor i believe are actually all those like bad implementations in the name of agile i mean just listen to the word sprint what does that imply let's rush as fast as you can for two weeks then come back tomorrow and we start a new two-week rush. That is more or less the same thing as asking Usain Bolt to run a hundred meters over and over and over again. And also, the Agile Manifesto, it actually promotes sustainable development the so Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. Agile Manifesto, Principle 8. And those of you who know your ex XP, Extreme Programming, should also recognize sustainable pace as one of the key concepts. And based on this, I would claim that if you're getting a little bit slow when you're getting old, it doesn't care a bit. It does not come down to who is the fastest on the keyboard, who understands everything without asking those stupid questions. It does not come down to who knows the, short, the newest shortcuts in IntelliJ or who knows like, the new JavaScript frameworks. It all comes down to the quality of the code. You will still be so much faster in the long run, if you build something right, instead of building it fast. And I'm definitely sure that your quality of the code will not be worse just because you're getting old. So stick in there. Robert C. Martin, Uncle Bob, he claims that if your software is getting harder and harder to develop, you are doing something wrong. And to me, that's exactly what happens when we rush. I mean, who has not been there? We're building something new. We don't really have the time to do it properly. So we cut some corners. We cheat a little bit with the unit testing. We rush a little bit. We have the best intention to fix that crappy code later. When we get more time, the next sprint, we will definitely get more time later. But believe me, you will not get more time later. That crappy code, that will live on, and that will hunt you down. And suddenly, your application will be in such a bad shape that you don't dare to change it at all. But then you get the brilliant idea. Let's start the rewrite. So the same persons start writing the same application again, but they don't really have the time to do it properly. So they cheat a little bit with the unit testing. They cut some corners, and there we go again. There is a word for this. It is called waste. It can kill an application or even a whole company. Martin Fowler has some wise words regarding this as well. So he claims that the fundamental role of internal quality is that it lowers the cost of future change. But there is some extra effort required to write good software, which does impose some cost in the short term. So according to Martin, we need to invest a little bit in the short run to build it slow, to build it with quality, but we will gain that back in the long run. And he also states that developers find poor quality code significantly slows them down within a few week, weeks. So there are not that many occasions, right, where we actually gain on rushing, not even in the short run, because most applications tend to live way longer than a few weeks, right? 
Now I have been talking for too long, so let's bring up those phones again, etc.ch slash g, capital B, capital X, capital M. I will remove the link in three, two, one. There we go. So, how often do you feel stressed about deadline? All the time, often, almost never, or never. Second question, how often do you cut corners? All the time, often, almost never, or never. Final question for now. Why do you cut corners? Do you feel pressure from the management to deliver? Or is it pressure from a team to deliver? Or do you feel pressure from yourself to deliver? Or is it more like quality is boring? Or even unnecessary? Or are you more like, what's quality? Or do you have some completely other reason? Or actually, did you just tell me that I don't cut corners? Guess that was the last one. So when I was reading those answers on the three previous polls, I was a little bit spooked. It felt like a dead race between like building stuff with quality or cheating with the quality. And the pressure to deliver, that was like 80 to 20 of you that actually feels pressure to deliver. And I believe that the cure for this is to slow down. I believe that the cure is not to like focus on deadlines. We need to slow down and find the sustainable pace. So let me wrap up this talk with a few examples of what I think you should do when you slow down. So I think you should slow down and take the time to practice. Improve in yourself, invest in yourself, attend those conferences, run at meetups, have book circles, do code cutters, or whatever thing that gets you growing in the competence. And I believe that you should have the, uh, that you should be able to do this on your company time. This is not something that you just need to do on your spare time. On your spare time, you should like play football with the kids or something. And I think you should slow down and take the time to tweak your process, eliminate the waste, for instance, use those retrospectives. Make sure that they have a good outcome and that you actually take the time to improve, to, to do those improvements that you found, find in the retrospectives. And I think you should slow down and start to plan ahead. I think we usually do this the least when we need it the most. So plan your day, plan your week, use sprint plannings, daily stand-ups, whatever you call it, but plan your work. Don't be like that raging bull that uh, just rush into the future. Know what to do before you start doing it. And I think you should slow down and take the time to refactor your code. Remember the Boy Scout rule, always leave your campground a little bit cleaner than you found it. Always leave your code a little bit cleaner than you found it. 
And I think you should slow down so you can start building quality software from the beginning, because that is the only way to be fast in the long run. So do you agree with me? One final time, let's pick up those devices again. I will leave the link for a few more seconds. So what will you do now? You will now go home and take like the course, developer to manager. Or will you actually like start slowing down? Or will you try to rush a little bit harder? Or will you promise yourself to keep on coding? Or will you just start playing Minecraft to raise the average age? Or will you improve in your competence and start to learn Fortran? So while it's a tough race here between slowing down, keep on coding and play Minecraft, I guess we have a winner. Keep on coding. I'm glad for that. So, just some final words to all you developers who probably will stop being a developer in the next few years. Please think this over. Beware of the Peter principle and stay with your passion. And don't care about if you're getting old and slow. You're actually not growing old. You are growing up. Take advantage of that. Make those gray hair your biggest asset. And let the rest slow down together with you. So that was all for me, from me. If you have some questions, comments, anything, just reach me at LinkedIn, Twitter, or drop me an email, or just shout out the question. We have a few more minutes here. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure.